Hi, my name is Peter Kotz, and you, if you are watching this video, then obviously I was not able to get to the FOSDEM event, uh, and thanks to the Moscow Belgium Embassy for that. And a few words before I begin with the talk. First, uh, currently I work in Yandex, which is the largest Russian search engine, and I'd like to thank Yandex and whole Yandex team for the support and for the inspiration. And second thing, I'd like to thank FOSDEM organizers for giving us a chance to share ideas, uh, to talk to each other, and hopefully all of you uh, will have some fun at the event. And now to my talk. The title of my talk is Multimaster MySQL Failover. When I hear the word multimaster, I start to think about those complex setups uh, with the right load being directed against several slaves, with all those complex replication schemes, with conflict resolutions. And fortunately, my talk has little to do with that complexity. And there is a bit of cheating in the title. Uh, but this is truly for your well-being, because we're going to talk about a very popular MySQL configuration, and I bet all of you have worked with such configuration in your everyday life. Mm, and we're going to talk about one master and several slaves replicating from that master. And, and I'm going to, mm, pr to describe you an algorithm which, in case of master failure, allows to choose the new master from whole multitude of your slaves. And partly this is where the word multi-master in the title of my talk comf comes from. And second thing uh, is that the algorithm uh, gives you a scheme which allows you to simulate complex multi-master solutions in that, for example, you can lose your master and continue just right away uh, like nothing bad has happened. Although there is a difference with real multi-master solutions in that the algorithm takes some time to execute, while real multi-master solutions recover from master failure in zero time. Now, like every other algorithm, this one has its limitations and, work, and works uh, under some conditions, which we are going to discuss before proceeding with the algorithm. Probably the main limitation of the algorithm is that the following should be true for all of your slaves. Nothing should modify the slave's database except the replication. And the very close limitation is that all of your slaves should be configured quite identically. Meaning that all of your slaves should be getting the same data as all other slaves sooner or later. Uh, in practice, in some random point in time, your slaves might hold different data, and they usually are doing that, especially if you are handling some significant write load. But if the write load stops, then all of your slaves should become identical in some limited time. And this assumption is enough for the algorithm. I was testing the algorithm uh, under the following conditions. First of all, all of my slaves were replicating directly from the master, while with the bit of while with a bit of modifications, the algorithm can be used with the replication chains too. I was using MySQL version 5.0 with InnoDB, although I see no obstacles to use it with any other version of MySQL, starting with version 3.23, for example, with transactional or non-transactional storage engine. Also, I was using the statement-based replication, which is the de facto standard for the MySQL replication, although the algorithm can be adapted to be used with the new row-based replication. Also, I am taking for granted that your slaves uh, do not drop dramatically behind the master and can keep up with the replication load, and they should even have some spare resource for read load processing. Now, before we proceed with the failure and the way algorithm copes with it, I'd like to have a broader look 
on the way the database works with our configuration. And I'd like to start with the word data. What is the data? The word data comes from the participle of the Latin verb dare, which means to give. So our write load, all of our inserts, updates, deletes, altered tables, etc. And this is the cat. Okay. All of our updates, inserts, deletes, altered tables is a flow of changes that are being given to us by the external world uh, and all of which go through one and only gate called master. For every atomic piece of data, for every incoming change, master assigns an integer number so that every change can be unambiguously identified. So we can depict the flow of changes as the number line with the master being at the right side of it, waiting for some new changes to come. When the new change comes, master assigns next available integer number and stores the change into the place called binary log from where the slaves can read those changes. What slaves do is they periodically check for the master position and when the position differs, they download every change starting, starting with the old master position and apply these changes to itself. So, given the master, several slaves and some fast rate of incoming changes, we end up having all of our slaves distributed again along the number line according to their replication speed to the left of the master. And at this random point in time, the failure occurs. Now a few words about the nature of the failure, which is important because it will give you an idea when the algorithm should be used. The failure could be anything from software, kernel failure, uh, hardware failure to even the loss of electricity. And the first thing you probably start to do when the failure happens is you try to estimate the time needed to recover. And actually, wise guys like us do this beforehand. And indeed, this is what we're doing right now. For the majority of the projects, several minutes of failure, several minutes of downtime will be quite okay, which is fairly enough for simple reboot in case of kernel failure. And just for the reference, I'd like to remind you that five minutes of downtime per year gives you prominent five nines for your service level agreement, uh, which is lower than one thousandth of a person for the unavailability. But there are circumstances, like for example we had in Moscow several years ago, uh, when half of the city was without any electricity at all for several hours, when you just don't know for sure how long will it take to recover, and you can't really wait. And this is the case in which the algorithm should be used. And we're coming to the exciting part, the algorithm. As it was said earlier, the master has failed and we have all of our slaves waiting for the master to come up and uh, holding some different data on them. And what we want to do is we want to be able to choose any of the slaves as the new master. How could we achieve that? The answer is, we should make all of our slaves equal. I propose to start with the simple case when we have only two slaves, and then we will expand the algorithm to the case of several slaves. If we have only two slaves, then obviously there are only two alternatives for their relative positions. Either they match, or differ. If the positions of the slaves match, if they are equal, then bearing in mind that nothing modifies the slaves database except the replication, uh, we can be sure that the data on the slaves is equal and the problem is solved. If their positions differ, then we need to make them equal. And again, there are two alternatives to do that. First of all, we can try to make them both equal to the slow slave. To do that, 
we need to undo changes 3 and 4 from the fast slave. And unfortunately, MySQL doesn't have such a feature as an undo of some arbitrary change. So this is simply impossible. Next, we can try to make them both equal to the fast slave. And to do that, we need to apply changes 3 and 4 to the slow slave, which it would do if the old master is still up. So the question is, is there any other place than the old master which holds changes 3 and 4? By the coincidence, fast slave already has these changes applied to itself. And there is a configuration option in MySQL called log slave updates, which allows the slaves to save the changes they applied to itself to, the, to their local binary log. So what we have left to do is we have to download changes 3 and 4 from the fast slave and apply them to the slow slave. After that, both slaves become equal and the problem is solved. Now, the algorithm for the several slaves consists of two parts. First part is finding the best slave, which is the slave that holds more data than all other slaves, or which is the same, which is mostly to the right on the number line. After that uh, comes the second part called uh, equalization part. Uh, this is the part uh, during which we make all of the slaves equal to the best slave by running the two slaves algorithm for each of them. After that all of our slaves become equal to the best slave and uh, as it was declared in the beginning of the talk, we can choose any of them as the new master. And this is as trivial as running change master to MySQL command on every slave. Generally, we've walked through the algorithm, but I'd like to emphasize some of its important properties. First of all, its speed. The speed of the algorithm depends on the number of the slaves and the difference between the best slave and all other slaves. If we run the equalization part in, in an optimal way, meaning in parallel for every slave, then we could estimate the time needed to execute the algorithm as the time needed to synchronize the best slave and the worst slave, meaning the slave which has more differences with the best slave than all other slaves. And this time can in turn be approximated by the average lag of all of your slaves during the production work. Uh, and this time shouldn't be quite big, uh, because as we said earlier, uh, your slaves should not lag dramatically behind the master. And mm, the second property is that after running the algorithm, as the result of its execution, we get all of our slaves equal to the best slave. Now imagine that we are using semi-synchronous replication introduced in your versions of MySQL, uh, which guarantees us that in any point in time there is at least one slave which is fully equal to the master and which is obviously will be selected uh, by the described algorithm as the best slave. And after the execution of the algorithm, all of, all of our slaves will become equal to the best slave, fully equal to the failed master. And this gives us the cluster of MySQL servers, uh, which can handle practically unlimited read load without ever losing any change that comes into it. These are the main properties of the algorithm. I hope now it is obvious for all of you that the described algorithm gives you a lot of flexibility during the master failure and it really gives you the opportunity to choose any of your slaves as the new master. And with the use of some techniques like semi-synchronous replication, it gives us the scheme which has the advantages of the complex multi-master solutions while keeping the complexity of our setup as low as, the, as our usual setup with one master and several slaves. And my last question is, isn't that what all of us need? 
And if you have any questions, you can contact me by email and I will be really happy to answer them.